Okay, this is George Bazzetti. My friend Cool and I are down here for All Lives Matter. And I've ran into some old friends I haven't seen in a long time. One of them is John Fernandez, former major teacher at uh, Roosevelt High School for, was it 27 years, John? 24 years. And John and I did the work to knock Marshall Tuck out of PLOS and to save those kids by I did the financial work on the fraud there and John did all the work on the students because John really knows that work, right John? Now John, why are you down here at the LAPD Commission the day after the Dallas tragedy? Well I'm here today in support of uh, Black Lives Matter protest uh, uh, also because actually all lives matter, but I'm here for that uh, group, uh, in support of them. I'm representing today the Full Rights for Immigrants Coalition. We have put over 25 marches for immigrant rights here in the United States. Uh, 25 marches over here, uh, we uh, had the most of the marches here at Olympic in Broadway. We will be having another march, a massive march, on October the 8th. 2016 for immigrant rights. So la lucha Great. sigue. That means that's true. Oh, but the struggle hey, uh, against hey, police no brutality no is also very, very real and very systemic. It's occurring. Uh, I understand uh, that uh, the two brothers, uh, one uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Minnesota, uh, the other one in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, there was also uh, a, a white brother that was also uh, uh, killed or executed in Fresno, and there was one here in uh, the East L in East LA, believe it or not, that was shot 17 times unarmed. So there, th that's in today's uh, LA. Fight. And all and all the ones uh, over Memorial Day or whatever in Chicago was it 64 uh, uh, violence acts of one kind or another and uh, multiple deaths. Yeah, so right? it's uh, it's like Malcolm X said, you know, Malcolm. Malcolm said he had a saying saying by any means necessary, but Malcolm, one of his videos, he said that, you know, when they hit you in the mouth upside the head and then they tell you that you started and you deserve to be shot or killed, and Malcolm X said, well, the only way this is going to stop, if we stop it, he said, if we stop it. So that still holds true today. Now, uh, getting back to this protest today, uh, we also understand, uh, like I said, that East LA, I mean, this is happening everywhere, okay, all, all over the world. It's universal. In, 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 in East L.A., uh, specifically that uh, L.A. Sheriff's Department, they have about uh, a lot of gangsters and thugs uh, as uh, sheriffs, and they were under uh, Leroy Baca for about 15 years, and then they had his uh, assistant, uh, terrorist uh, named uh, uh, Tanaka. Tanaka, so these guys got convicted. Uh, Baca, though, want, uh, they want to give him uh, six months, they should give him six years, but at any rate, the East L.A. Sheriffs, they have gangsters right there in East L.A. in that, in that Sheriff's Department. They have a gang called the Bandidos. They got a, 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 a Mexican with a sombrero. They have another group, another gangster group in East L.A. in the Sheriff's Department called the Jump Out Boys. Wow. And they have a, a, a tattoo. Also, they have a, a, a skull, a menacing skull with a gun pointed at you. Jump Out Boys. Educators, and if, uh, if, a, if, a, if a L.A. Sheriff deputy uh, kills somebody in the line of duty, they put little smoke coming out. They, these guys are just like gangsters. Yeah, they were tattoos, they were beanies, they brutalized everybody over there in the county jail. There was an incident over there in Montebello a few like, years ago at a Christmas party at the Quiet Cannon where the deputies That's right. were showing this. You know what that, that stands for? That stands for the third floor in the county jail. This is their gang sign. There's about 21 of them already uh, uh, being, 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 being convicted. And they had a fight right there among themselves a couple of years ago at the Quiet Cannon where, where deputies started fighting it and a female deputy tried to break them up and they punched her right in the face. And six of them were fired. So we've, we've had our share of brutality also, like I mentioned, Eduardo Rodriguez here, uh, it's in today's paper, shot 17 times, mostly in the back and the head. Uh, so that's why we're out here uh, and, and, you know, this violence has to stop and it's not going to stop these police until they are convicted
convicted and prosecuted, but we got too much corruption here. We're, we got a corrupt uh, 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 a political system. Uh, the Democratic Party's corrupt. The Republican Party is corrupt. We call I mean, them the Republican. Hillary, Hillary, Hillary's <laughs> laughing at us because she only believes that the laws for peasants. I mean, they're laughing at us. The the uh, FBI, they should have prosecuted her. Even my friend here, George Bassetti, they they trying to frame him, you know, for some bogus uh, stuff. So uh, I mean, they're corrupt. The educational system is dysfunctional. John, the political system is. Let me dysfunctional. let me ask you this. Uh, you're you're really doing good, but I want to refine this a little bit more. Where are you going, John? Tell us why you're here flying the Mexican flag. Okay, uh, my, 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 we my want to hear from you. Uh, wants to know, well, what's the Mexican flag about, John? Well, the Mexican flag, as you know, in June, eight teachers were killed protesting. In Mexico. Uh, in Mexico, they were on strike. 10,000 right? of them were fired. Okay? So that's why I'm here. And, and the leaders they put into prison on private jets they, with hoods over their heads. They, they kidnapped them. So that that, that police abuse they could be the federal, the run state, by the U.S. And, and for that, privatization to USA. Uh, you know that's your Mexican government. So the Mexican flag signifies the support not only of the Mexican community for the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, movement, but right. also for the teachers in Oaxaca that uh, that have been killed and kidnapped and and, and harassed. And it also stands for, a couple of years ago, the 43 students that were going to be teachers that were kidnapped in Ayotzinapa, Guerrero. Oh, right. 43 disappeared. We're here because this day. we're supporting those people, those students too, that disappeared. Because what's the difference, and right, John? And, and so, you know what, this thing is universal. It's got to stop. And that's why, and that's why it's all lives matter, John? That's right. John, you've worked on this your whole life, haven't you? That's right. How many, how many protests and stuff through your life? Tell us about how you got started, John. I think people should know where you're coming from. Well, actually, I got. This is a man that's really helped people out for a long time. How many kids? What do kids tell you when they run into you now that you're not teaching, John? Well, when I run to my run into my students, they're all doing well. They're all doing well. Some are in college. They're raising families. They're obeying the law. They're being very, very responsible. And I'm very proud of that. I always run into them, and I've had a positive uh, 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 effect on them. But my my beginnings were in 1968 when my brother, teacher, uh, Sal Castro, he was my teacher at Lincoln High School. That was my first political event in 1968 when the students in East L.A. and the five major high schools walked out for unequal education. And the struggle continues for educational has equality. Has it changed, that was John? My, uh, it, only, uh, it, it only has changed a small bit. Now, now they think that the, the charter schools are the solution. That's only one little tiny aspect. Aspect. In California, it became a state, a, a republic in 1849, it became a state in 1850, and the public schools from 1860, the, the public schools like Los Angeles public schools in 1860, they banned African Americans or blacks and Indians and Asians. They call Asians in 1850 Mongolians. They did not have Mexicans at that time. They didn't call us Mexicans, but we went to segregated schools, okay, until 1947 with the Mendes uh, Westminster case was won, okay, and that was before the Brown versus the Board of Education. John, one, one second. So that, those were my, my, my roots. The oppression starts, it, you know, if you want to really look at it historically, it starts when Columbus landed in the Bahamas in 1492, and that's when they devastated all those islands for one thing, for gold, well actually for three things, gold, glory, and God. John, are you still writing your book? Yeah. Can, can, would you tell them, uh, not what's in the book, but, but sort of what got you going and the things you've exposed me to, like they wiped out 95% of everybody down there, right? That's right. Okay. So, John has been, he's, John has been working historically to tell the truth about the Hispanic culture relating to education and their condition on their side, which really relates to all people, such as black people and everybody, because as we're seeing internationally, this stuff is coming down in suppression. Am I correct? And, and you're trying to explain it to people because John and I have worked for a long time, even though sometimes we fight.
and trying to get real information to people. Am I not correct, John? Correct. And that's really why we're here today? That's right. Okay, so if you could explain a little bit about where you're coming from to try to try tie this up with what you said, with the studies you're doing to tie it up in a way that people will understand. That's what I'm well, trying to get to. What a, one of the reporters right now, uh, we were talking about violence, and, and he was saying, well, that violence does it, it, it cuts through class and race. And I said, yes, you're actually very correct. It, and, and the violence here in this country and around the world, it's been perpetuated by the media, by the, mov uh, by the movies, uh, a lot of it by the gangster rap, the gangs themselves, the misogyny and violence against women, but actually the media, the movies, and, and the movies are perpetuating and glorifying it. I remember when that movie Matri uh, the, uh, Matrix came out, all the shooting and everything, and all these kids loved it, and we analyzed the movie. So I think the violence, it, it, it's all about violence, and the violence has been perpetuated here for profit in the culture industries, and they're basically uh, socializing our youth and everybody else to do one thing, to consume, to be violent, to be ins uh, insensitive or desensitize the population and become consumers and be obedient technocrats and that's what they want you to be. So in the end, you become very, very apolitical and do nothing. But we're rising above above that and we're going to change it. We're going to continue to struggle. The writings that I'm doing, the research deal with education uh, uh, in, in California. But at any rate, uh, that's why I'm here. I'm supporting my black brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. John, that was as good as I've ever heard you. Thank you so much, because this is why we're really out here, isn't it? That's right. The more people understand. Well, sir, would you like to uh, be interviewed? Anybody else like to? Uh, <laughs>